We what? Okay. Ain't no power like the power of the people because the power of the people don't stop. Ain't no power like the power of the people because the power of the people don't stop. Ain't no power like the power of the people because the power of the people don't stop. What? Ain't no power like the power of the people because the power of the people don't stop.
Down, down. Up with the workers. Down, down. Up with the workers. Up with the workers. Okay, yeah, I can turn the ox. Up with the workers. 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 Down. That should be it. Should be it. Down. Up with the workers. Up with the workers. Down with the bosses. Up with the workers. Up with the workers. Down with the bosses. Up with the workers. Up with the workers. Check, check. Check one, check two. There, there is a. Howard, Howard ran away like a coward. I'd, I'd like to make an announcement. Over there, I got it. I'll get it. Okay. Check, check. Hey, gamers. Check, check, check. Hi, 
there. Hello, I'm Rachel. You may be shocked to find out that I work at a Starbucks. <laughs> um, I've worked at Starbucks for three years. Um, big fan. Love to love to work there. Um, there's a couple issues. Uh, <laughs> um, so there's a few things that I want to talk about today. One, why we're all here. Um, today is Founders Day. Um, Founders Day is usually a celebration of our friend Howard Schultz. Um, Strong agree. Well, hang on. Um, big agree. Um, so today, or not even today, actually, um, a few days ago, Howard Schultz actually stepped down as CEO. Um, <laughs> Howard Schultz marks our second CEO in a year-and-a-half-long union campaign. Howard Schultz ran away like a coward. Um, so we have a little little tally over here. Um, we got him. Uh, Howard Schultz is the second of two CEOs who has given up on this company and run away from the power of the workers. Um, we are celebrating today, not Founders Day, a man who says that we should have an empty chair in a boardroom instead of a worker in that chair to stand up for us. <laughs> Those of us who work in stores know how badly we need someone backing us. We know how badly we need somebody standing up for us and what we need in stores. We see safety issues, we see retaliatory firings, and just retaliatory behavior. It's important to have someone to back us because we've seen that neither Kevin Johnson, the old CEO, or Howard Schultz will ever stand up for the workers. This company sells itself as a community-based, people-first company. And we've seen that it's not. Um, Howard Schultz has failed this company. And fingers crossed that Laxman uh, takes our word for uh, the, the power that we have and that we know what's best for this company in a way that he can't. So for our first speaker, I'd love to introduce you to Haley, a worker from Bellingham. Hi, everyone. My name is Haley. And I've been a barista for about six years. And never, I never thought when I was 18 starting out this job that I would be part of something of this size and here in front of all of you all. So thank you. Um, and this is what keeps me going. This fight with Starbucks has been a hard and long one, but you guys, my amazing coworkers, and everyone out there supporting our unionization efforts make it all worth it. In my time at Starbucks, <laughs> in my time at Starbucks, I've seen quite a drastic culture shift. And that's why I wanted to start organizing. Starbucks, like Rachel said, prides itself on being a great, company, one that provides benefits, or good benefits, good pay, hours, and a sense of community. And maybe they used to be that, but they aren't anymore, and they can't keep up, and we deserve better. And that's why we're here. <laughs> I'm lucky to have such amazing coworkers that truly support one another, because we don't see that from corporate. We often see capitalistic greed, every day and <laughs> they want us to work faster for the same amount of money tighter schedules and that alone is proof that they're based solely on their profits <laughs> the heavy workloads make us feel indispensable but everything else makes us feel very disposable and if they cared about us and our respective communities they would stop union busting and show up to the bargaining table They would stop firing workers and closing stores. <laughs> Starbucks cannot continue to be a corporate giant and act like a small business. It is time to come to the table. I hope that this can be a new beginning for Starbucks with Howard Schultz leaving. One that, a company that will work with its co or with its workers and not against them. 
I continue to fight for not just myself, but for those at Starbucks and those coming into Starbucks, food service workers everywhere that deserve a livable wage, consistency, safety, and security in their workplaces, and the fairness, equity, and right to organize free from fear. Hello again. Hello again. Um, Haley talked about uh, the mission and values that this company has or claims to have. Um, and I think that that's something we need to keep in mind as we, as we organize. And it's something we do keep in mind as we organize. We have seen this company treat us the way they do, treat our communities the way they do, com abandon our communities when it becomes too hard to protect them. And we, the workers, know how to nurture and protect our communities. And this company refuses to, and that's why we organize. Um, we organize to protect ourselves, each other, and our allies and our communities, communities we know and love in a way that this corporation can't and fundamentally never will. Um, to speak on that, uh, Gwen, I would love to bring you up to the stage. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Gwen. I worked at a Starbucks in Bellingham, Washington for two and a half years until I was unjustly terminated. I'm here to share my story today because I want Starbucks to be held accountable for their actions. And I want workers across the world to unify and fundamentally reframe the way we construct and think about labor as a society. So to speak on the problems, uh, when I went into work, I faced these issues on a daily basis. Uh, the, the largest of them being our floors were constantly understaffed. So we couldn't get basic prep or cleaning tasks done efficiently. And we also rarely were able to run breaks or end shifts on time. We had to stretch ourselves thin and stretch into multiple positions and roles throughout the store just so that we could work at a baseline level and hope we could make it through the rush. And when we brought this up to corporate, we told them, you know, the problems that we were facing, and they said that we have to earn our labor coverage by working faster to get quicker drive-through times and higher customer connection scores. I'm sure you all see the, uh, the fallacy there, but due to the excessive volume of customers that we got hour after hour and having inadequate staffing, we couldn't effectively accomplish that benchmark, meaning we would never be able to earn that labor coverage that somehow escapes the financial capabilities of a multi-billion dollar industry. So, to solve that, I, uh, I was the I led the charge for forming a union at my store. <laughs> Gathered signatures, uh, formed a union network, organization committee, organized strikes, sent out memos, um, you know, fighting, fighting anti-union propaganda that spread throughout our store consistently. We won our election in December, and immediately after that, uh, shift supervisor hours were cut putting our eligibility for Starbucks health and education benefits at risk. Yeah, gets worse. Um, so for me personally, uh, near the end of December, my apartment flooded. And due to work being done within that, uh, asbestos also got into our place. So I had no home. Um, I had to call out of four shifts to find temporary solutions to this critical life emergency uh, where my wife, dog, and I had no home. Uh, I told management ahead of time, and they said, oh, yeah, sorry, it's like, sorry this is happening. Take all the time you need. Uh, let me know if you need anything else. Uh, I had to spend thousands up front to cover the cost of finding short and long-term living solutions. So I thought I would apply for the CUP Fund, which, if you don't know, is a Starbucks benefit that's offered to employees uh, who are going through a trying time. I was denied because I wasn't in good standing with the company, despite having no previous conversations about my performance. So 
So then, a few weeks after that, they served me a termination notice. With, <laughs> with the very stated reason being of those four shifts that I had to call out of to handle a financial and housing crisis. Yes, and they call us partners, thank you. So I've been a vocal organizer from the very beginning. I didn't back down even when I was outed to corporate as being a union leader. It's clear that we're trying to find excuses to fire me with the best they can muster being a personal emergency. Despite this setback, I still to this day dedicate myself to leading the charge for unionization efforts because I care about the people I work with. <laughs> I care about the collective humanity. Oh, okay. Which is why I oppose the exploitative ways in which huge corporations like Starbucks continue to operate. So in light of all these difficulties, I've seen firsthand how powerful collective organization can be. I've had members of my local community along with the larger national network of union members come together to help me through my difficult financial troubles during this time. I've talked to amazing advocacy groups, lawyers, and other individuals who have been a beacon of hope and prosperity in this trying time. When we unite and help one another, when we collectively come together to demand action, that is how humanity is guaranteed safety and success. Hi, welcome back. Hi, welcome to Starbucks. Hi, what can I get? Any? No, stop. No. Um, hi, welcome back. Um, so, back. like, like Gwen talked about, um, a lot of the things that Starbucks touts as its impressive like business practices or whatever, some of the things that are on these very posters that just so happened to appear here today for no reason whatsoever. Um, things like a uh, 1.4 billion dollars spent on partners or whatever. Um, how many billions of dollars do you have, Starbucks or Howard Schultz personally? How many billions of dollars have you denied us? These are stolen wages. Every day we work our asses off. We break our bodies, we break our spirits, we are spit on and harassed by customers because these people want just a couple more dollars in their pockets. So, maybe we could increase that $1.4 billion just a little bit since we're still working with starvation wages and impossible floors. Maybe we could fix the safety concerns in our stores. Maybe we could fix the fact that there are people who these incredible benefits that they're guaranteeing for workers, nobody can get the hours to get that. How are we? If you deny us our hours, how the fuck are we supposed to get health care? There are people who are sick and in pain and they are dying because you are denying us our health insurance through these denials of hours, through this, these unlivable wages. We should not have to, be, we should not be giving up our jobs or be terminated from our jobs because we felt we, de we dealt with an emergency. It's unreasonable and disgusting. It is not how a human led corporation functions. Live up to your mission and values or shut up about them. We could not say all of this in front of the corporate building unless we had the support of our friends and allies in this community. There are people who have fought and continue to fight and will fight for us every single day who support us in making a rally at Starbucks headquarters happen. Um, people who... People who lift up our voices and who give us the chance to allow people who work at Starbucks to tell our own stories. So, to speak about that, Katie Garrow. Good afternoon, brothers, sisters, and siblings! We're going to start with a little chant, and it's a call and response, and it goes... One day longer, one day stronger, one day longer, one day stronger, one day longer, one day stronger, 1300 ULPs longer. Hey. Don't count out Gen Z. 
Brothers, sisters, and siblings, my name is Katie Garrow. My pronouns are she and her, and I'm the elected leader of King County's labor movement, the organization MLK Labor. I want to say thank you to the members of the print and broadcast media who are here today to cover our stories. You are union members of IBEW, of SAG-AFTRA, of IATSE, of Communications Workers of America, and you are fundamental to a free and fair democracy. Now, are there some union members here today? Do I hear S-E-I-U? Do I see U-F-C-W? Unite here! Protect 17! O-P-E-I-U Local 8! My union, the laborers, iron workers, these folks run and build this city. I'm a millennial labor leader. I'm 34 years old. Millennials are the first generation in this country to be worse off than our parents. And the statistics decline for Gen Z from there. But I've been a union member since 2011, and because of my union membership, I own a home in Federal Way. I was allowed to have health care coverage despite having a pre-existing condition before the law required it. And because of my union collective bargaining agreement, I have the protection from discrimination, from misogyny, and from sexism in the workplace. My union gave me security and belonging, and that is what I fight for every day for every worker in this great county. Now Seattle, like Starbucks, enjoys a reputation of progressivity. We tout ourselves as a place that is a refuge for LGBTQ people. Just like Starbucks touts its workforce as being pro-LGBTQ. But is this place and is this company really functionally welcoming and supportive if one in three young people in this county who are homeless are LGBTQ? Is this company really protecting trans workers if there is not full gender-affirming health care available for its workforce? I want you all to have protection from discrimination and from poverty. I want you to have health care and that damn flag at work. The Starbucks brand is prestigious. What if working there was too? What if you all organized wall to wall every Starbucks company in this country? What if you could establish yourself as the high watermark for baristas in coffee shops all over America? What if you could make a career and support a family and own a home on a barista's wage? The labor movement is founded in the principle of solidarity. And solidarity means that you never fight alone. MLK Labor is an institution that has existed for 130 years. And the reason that we have endured is because of the way that we fight and protect each other. So I want to give you, Starbucks Workers United, a warm, warm welcome into the King County Labor Movement. And I want to close by 
by thanking the IOTSI folks who have brought the sound today. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, stay strong. This fight is long, but you are not alone. It is now my privilege in the spirit of labor movement solidarity to introduce a worker, Zane, who has been fighting for their rights at Homegrown for the last year and a half, another worker in the food service industry with Unite Here Local 8. Zane, where are you? You're right here. All right, come on up. Uh, we got Sam here too. Uh, we work at Homegrown and we want a fucking union. Hi everyone. I'm so proud of all of you for being here. Woo! <laughs> um, I work at Homegrown. I'm a shift late, you know, no big deal. Um, <laughs> and working there, we finally formed our union after a year of fighting. <laughs> we faced a lot of horrible union busting. They did not want that for us. Okay, It was horrible. We've been fighting for better wages, health care, respect, and so much more. As you all know, you've been fighting too. Um, we've had to fight against racist and misogynistic managers. It was horrible. It was traumatizing. Our bosses wanted to use us as money-making machines, exhausting us and ruining our quality of life and not even giving us the benefits we deserve. Yeah. After fighting for a year, we're negotiating for a contract, but it's been such a tough battle, and we know well the struggle you're all facing right now. Um, but we at Homegrown stand in solidarity with you. It's a hard battle, but keep staying brave. Stay strong and keep fighting, and you'll win. All right, I'm Zane. I'm proud to be a rank-and-file member of Unite Here Local 8. I work at Homegrown, and again, we want a union! As this system heads into another recession, banking crisis, financial reshuffling, Whatever they call it, workers are rising up. Workers are fighting back. That's right. We're fighting back at Homegrown, and we're going to win a strong contract. Teamsters at UPS are going to go on strike in August for the first time since 97. Woo! That's right. And Starbucks workers, of course, are here and across the country fighting for union power. We need to think about how we're fighting and why we're fighting. Let's talk about how. We can't outspend the boss. Howard Schultz has more money than we can ever buy back. We don't have the government on our side. Labor law is not for us. It's for them. That's right. We have each other and we have organization. We organized across the entire company, person by person, shop by shop, in order to forge a hammer of change, a union, not a union on paper, not a union just in the ideas of people's heads, but a union on the shop floor. Our bosses talk about a union the same way your bosses talk about a union. They talk about it like it's completely external to the company, like it exists only at the Seattle Labor Temple, only in the minds of the leaders. But that's not what a union is. A union is every fight against unfair discipline, every shift that's too fucking long. That's right. Every time we go to each other and not the boss, before or after recognition, that's a union. A union is a fight. A union is a fight and workers are fighting. We're fighting for an increase in wages and benefits. We're fighting for an end to the sexual harassment that pervades the fucking service industry. We're fighting for an end to the weaponization of immigration status that bosses love to use against us. 
for an end to attacks on our rights through investigation, transparent discipline, and in all fights, a fight for power. At homegrown, across the entire company, picketing, delegating, and shutting down production, we fought for months. When we fight, we win. Let's talk about why. It would be simple enough to say every worker everywhere deserves a union, deserves a chance to fight, and deserves a chance to win demands from the boss. And that's true, but it's not enough. Let's face it. This current organizing drive across the country didn't come out of nowhere. You can draw a direct line from the uprising after the murder of George Floyd by racist pigs to this wave of new organizing. From young workers, from women, from oppressed nationality workers, and from queer workers, this is a new union drive. The fight of the entire multinational working class is closely tied in with the fight for national liberation and against racism. We're fighting it with this union as well. In our contract, we're fighting for protection for workers who are incarcerated because we know how these racist pigs act in the streets. We're fighting for protection against ICE because we know how this country treats immigrants. We're not doing this because they aren't bread and butter union issues. We're doing this because they are bread and butter union issues. These are real issues. We also need to organize outside the shops. We need to connect the struggles of the working class and of the national liberation movements in this country. We won't have freedom for workers here without freedom for the Black Belt South, without freedom for Hot's Law and the Chicano movement, without freedom for indigenous people all across the U.S. It's one fucking fight. We need more than just fighting unions for this. That's why I'm not ashamed or embarrassed. I'm proud to be a revolutionary. I'm a member of Freedom Road Socialist Organization. I'm proud to be a member of Unite Here. We're organizing at Homegrown. We're fighting the boss. Love and rage to Starbucks workers in the struggle and to all workers in the entire world out there fighting. Thank you. Olivia García, yo vengo de San José, California, soy trabajadora, soy trabajadora de comida rápida, tengo dos décadas trabajando en, trabajé 18 años para McDonald's, les voy a contar un poco de mi historia. Hi everyone, my name is Olivia García, I come from San José, California, I've been a McDonald's worker for 18 years and two Uh, more years and another uh, fast food industry, total of two decades of uh, being a fast food worker. And I'm going to share a little bit about my story. En un turno de la mañana en mi trabajo, yo soy sobreviviente de violencia. En un turno de la mañana, un hombre me amenazó de muerte porque quería la comida rápida. Le dije, yo solo soy trabajadora de McDonald's. Y me amenazó, me gritó, y a causa de eso, yo sufro PTSD. I've been a, I'm a survivor of violence. Uh, one day at my work, I was just doing a regular work when one of the customers came really violent uh, and um, threatened me that he's going to kill me. So uh, that's uh, horrible. I have a... Um, condition now PTSD after after that Lastimosamente McDonald's no se ofreció en nada en ayudarme. Yo tuve que pagar todos mis costos médicos, todo mi tratamiento, todas mis terapias. ¿Qué hizo McDonald's? No hizo nada. McDonald's never take care of myself. He, I have to pay for my own bills. I have to pay for my own care. 
they, they, they didn't provide not, nothing, not uh, treatment, no psychology. They, they treat me like if nothing happened. Estuve en Nueva York. Estuve en un evento. No fui invitada, pero yo llegué a ese, a ese evento. <laughs> Donde el presidente de McDonald's supuestamente recibió un premio por ser el mejor empleador. I went to New York. I was not invited to that event because it was an event to give a reward to McDonald's CEO for being the best boss ever. I was not invited, but I went to see them. Ustedes creen que eso es justo. Es inaceptable lo que hacen con nosotros. Yo le daría un premio por ser el peor empleador. Yo no tengo miedo. Y yo le dije a McDonald's, le grité, le dije, tú no eres el mejor empleador, McDonald's, porque no le das protección a tu gente cuando te necesitan. Nunca nos has dado protección. I, I think that's a shame on them to give a, some person like them a recognition that they did not deserve. I scream loudly in front of his face, telling him that he's should be getting a recognition for be the worst, worst boss ever. Not for be the best. And I was not ashamed to do it because he really deserved to have that recognition. Los californianos ganamos una ley que se llama AB257. Los empleadores y las grandes corporaciones como McDonald's, Burger King, Starbucks, fueron capaces de dar millones de dólares para frenar la ley que nosotros ganamos con tanto esfuerzo. In California, we were able to win a, a law that it was AB257, the Fast Recovery Act. And that was giving us the protection. But what the corporations, bigger like McDonald's, Burger King, and Starbucks do it to us, they stop, they try to stop that law, they will give us the protection. Pero yo le quiero decir una cosa. Yo le quiero decir una cosa. Esa ley nosotros ya la ganamos. La ganamos. Y la vamos a reactivar. Aunque ellos hayan dado millones para frenarla, nosotros la vamos a reactivar. Porque nosotros los trabajadores tenemos la voz. Nosotros somos la fuerza. Somos el poder. Porque sin nosotros... Ellos no son nadie. Nosotros somos quienes los hacen millonarios. ¿Sí o no, compañeros? I'm going to try to do a little justice, right? Because she was amazing. But, oh my goodness. They, they did not deserve that, right? We were fighting so hard. We was able to get this law. We were, we were working. We were striking. We were doing whatever it takes to make that law pass. And they take it away. But uh, we are not going to let them. We're going to fight back. We're going to be able to uh, push them back because they, we are the workers. We know the ones who fight. We are the ones who deserve to be treated with respect, with dignity. And Venimos desde California a apoyar a los trabajadores de Starbucks. Quiero decirle a ustedes, compañero, que estamos con ustedes. No están solo. Así como nosotros ganamos esa ley, ustedes pueden ganar mucho más. Vamos a trabajar todos juntos, porque cuando luchamos, ¡ganamos! So we came all the way from California to give you guys the support because you guys deserve. We've been fighting really hard to win what we want, and you guys are going to win too because when we fight, we win. when we fight, we win. when we fight, the workers united we never be defeated united the people be defeated se puede o no se puede cuando luchamos ganamos gracias It's working conditions like these that we are fighting against every single day. Every day we have to deal with unsafe working conditions, unsafe policy, and 
we can't live with it. This is why we organize. We organize for a safe workplace for ourselves and our coworkers and our families. Seth Oxford. Hi, my name's Stephanie Oxford. Um, all of these speeches are a little tough to follow. You guys have been amazing. Um, thanks for having me here. I've been a barista at Starbucks for about two years. Uh, during the pandemic, I decided to go back to school. I needed a job that wouldn't close back down and in order to support myself and my daughter. And um, Starbucks was open, was hiring, and offering tuition benefits. I heard that they had great benefits and progressive values. So, right. <laughs> I work at a 24-hour store in Portland, Oregon. And um, in order to get full-time hours, I had to work overnight. Uh, there were no shift differentials, uh, no guaranteed schedules, and it was difficult to even get uh, two days off in a row, um, which was really hard working overnight. Um, let's see. When paycheck came, I still couldn't afford to pay my bills. Uh, in order to afford Starbucks health insurance that they offered and my rent, I had to go back to bartending and reduce my hours at Starbucks to 20 hours a week, which is just enough to get benefits and keep a little bit of sanity. I realized very quickly that they did not live up to their stated values. <laughs> if Starbucks treats its workers so well, why do we have to supplement our income? If there really aren't enough hours to create stable schedules for us at this multi-billion dollar company, why are we constantly understaffed? Why are we always hiring? I added in full-time schooling and I became under or overwhelmed. I saw my coworkers suffering in this environment. I saw my own mental and physical health suffer. And I knew that I had to change something or get out. My story is not unique, and I have a lot more privilege than some baristas that I work with. I work with some of the most highly competent and badly undervalued people I've ever met. Most of them were afraid of unionizing, of retaliation while unionizing. Two of them got fired, um, and yeah. And we pulled it together and did it anyway. They are, they are striking today, and I am so proud of them. They are a huge part of the reason that I haven't left yet. An idea that Starbucks sells that I'd love to be able to buy into is the idea of the third place, this place of community and connection and belonging outside of your work and your home, right? Um, I haven't experienced that at our store. We're more focused on drive times and volume um, and profits, essentially. I wonder if it's actually possible to create a third space in a company that doesn't value its workers' lives outside of the workplace. And where profits are concerned, we deserve to get back enough of the revenue that we generate to be financially secure and then some. I'll leave you all with one of my favorite quotes from the author, activist, and icon, Angela Davis, that has kept me going many times through this experience. You have to act as if it were possible to radically transform the world. And you have to do it all the time. Being part of this movement has actually made me feel like that is possible, and I'm so glad to be here with all of you today. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Uh, it's been a great day out here. It's been a lot of fun. So many people turned out. We love all the support. I've got one last thing I want to say. I want everybody to tune in and listen to this. Everybody's attention to close us out. Howard Schultz has left as CEO Lakshman Narasimhan is now the CEO of Starbucks. So we have three things to say to him. We demand that he sign the Starbucks Workers United Fair Election Principles. We demand 
that Starbucks negotiate with Starbucks Workers United. And we demand that they respect our right to organize. The reason we're saying these things now is because we've got one final message as a send-off on our way as we start heading out of here. Every Starbucks worker who's here, by the way, we're heading down to that street. Everyone else disperses as you need, but our send-off chant is, we will be back. 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 We will be back.